minutes before nine. Now we're shifting our attention to youth unemployment. Chatting to Crystal Duncan next. I caught up with her earlier this afternoon. She's the project lead for the Youth Capital Initiative. And we found out more around this initiative and how they are planning to tackle and address youth unemployment. President Cyril Ramaphosa said last year at a June 16 event that youth unemployment uh, is a national crisis and we've seen the the numbers as 27.6 percent and you add in those who have stopped looking for work and that catapults up to a a breathtaking 38 percent are we addressing youth unemployment in the correct way well youth capital exists to kind of address what we think has been missed in the past so as you say we've been saying it's a national crisis um, and yet the numbers keep climbing currently yeah. over 8 million young people not in any education training or employment the numbers are staggering um, and we at youth capital think that there are three things that have been missing in the approaches thus far the first one is young people themselves where we are they in these conversations and the decisions that are being made the second um, we aren't working towards a common goal and shared agenda, all these little projects, as wonderful as they are, as well-meaning as they are, don't add up to a bigger bigger solution. Right. And the stakeholders in the area, you've got government, academics, um, private sector, and then the average South African. How are we creating spaces where they can actually convene and, and talk about these issues um, in, a co- in a coordinated way? And so we believe those are the three gaps in the current approaches to youth unemployment. Youth Capital, you're the project lead for the campaign. How long has the campaign been on the ground for? We're two years old about this week, actually. Um, So we're an incubated project of the DG Murray Trust. Um, And so we're very much a startup, a small team. Um, And we spend a lot of time in the first year and a half of operation going across the country and speaking to young people and really hearing from them what their lived experience is of looking for work, trying to complete their education and and using those stories and that experience and pairing it with existing research. We've come up with what we we think is is an agenda that uh, everybody should get behind and that we feel can solve this problem. What are the challenges that the young people have shared with you in why they're struggling to find gain? employment so the obvious ones which we expected to hear about are a lack of educational opportunities a lack of employment opportunities and then obviously financial um, constraints but the interesting things that came up um, which we expected to a lesser degree are things like mental health support Um, the lack of social capital that young people face the majority of young people in this country do not live in a household where there is an employed adult And I mean, I'm sure you can attest to the fact as well that most of us find out jobs through people we know who refer us to an advert, who refer us somewhere, who help us with our CV. So those kinds of um, less obvious things are the things that we think have been missing from the conversation. Mental health. What does it do to a young person to look and look and look for years at a time and to just face that rejection over and over and over again? So those are the interesting things that came up that perhaps have um, gotten less of the limelight in previous discussions. They're certainly very critical and needs to be mentioned and important as well. I mean, uh, mental health support and you mentioned that social capital. These are, 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 I suppose, circumstances which one needs to calculate in terms of addressing youth unemployment. Otherwise, it's also going to be a wonderful idea, but it doesn't quite practically translate on the ground. Absolutely. Um, and how we're thinking about translating it on the ground is to we're piloting the project this year with our Youth Capital Influencer Program. Mm. And, and what that is, is we're hosting workshops in three provinces um, with a total of about 85 young people who have been selected for the program. And we're really trying to take them on a journey of leadership and advocacy. Um, and following the workshops with us, they go back into the community. They form Youth Capital Collectives, which are just teams of other young people like themselves. They look at the assets they have in their community and say, okay, what do we have? Yeah. How can we build on what we do have to address the things we don't have? How can we take action in our community? And then we at Youth Capital hope we can elevate these small local actions into big national policy changes. And and what is the role of the influencers in this regard? I'm sure just to promote what uh, Youth Capital is about. So the role of the influencers is really to network with each other and okay. to share ideas. Because again, we believe that young people have huge potential. We had our first workshop in the Western Cape uh, almost two weeks ago now. And 
somebody got up and said, I have an NGO and I don't know how to register it. And another young person who was there said, I've done all that research. I've got all of it for you. Here's my number. Give me yeah. a call. Mm-hmm. And so we think there's a lot of potential in just connecting these young people to each other, not just within the Western Cape, but with the other influences in the other provinces. And then they go back into their communities and they kind of pass this on to other young people because we're a small team. We can't be everywhere. Sure. Um, but these influences are really spreading the word for us and being kind of our hands and our feet on the ground. The role of the change maker? Uh, similar to the influences. Yeah, so the collectives okay. that we, we we want it to feel we want it to feel like this is a prestigious leadership kind of program. We want all of young people, all the young people in South Africa, to feel that they can become a part of it. Um, but we can't obviously meet with everybody face to face. So this collective is one way for other young people to tap into the resources. We send the workbooks home with the influences. Um, these collectives will be invited to other events that we have in their communities, and so that's one way to kind of grow the network. I see. Um, through the influences. How advanced are these collectives currently? Well, we've just had our first workshop in the Western Cape two <laughs> weeks ago. So um, they're probably busy recruiting now. And right. we're actually off to East London tomorrow to do the Eastern Cape round of all the workshops. Um, and then in two weeks' time, we're off to Gauteng um, to do uh, workshops in Soweto there. So we're very early days. <laughs> um, but we are starting to, to take action. And so we're currently running a campaign for Sona um, where we're asking young people and we're specifically asking the influencers to kind of lead by example here mm. to sh- share their videos on social media or with us and we'll reshare them if data is an issue um, saying – Mr. President, this is what we want to hear you talk about in Sona with regards to youth unemployment. Um, and that's a campaign we're currently running called Hashtag Speak Up. And how can the youth speak up? How do they go about sharing what, they, what their concerns are so that hopefully that the president will hear it? Well, post it on social media. Okay. Tag at Youth Capital in your post. Mm. Uh, hashtag use the hashtag speak up. Um, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Um, and you can also, if you go to our website, there's a WhatsApp line. You know, you can get in touch with us via WhatsApp. Again, sometimes data is an issue and a WhatsApp yes. video is easier for young people. You can share it with us on our WhatsApp line. We'll share it for you, tag you in it. You spoke of a collective agenda you feel that we can all support. What is that agenda that you guys have created at Youth Capital? So broadly, we're speaking about education. And to sum up that point, we want all who start to finish, Mm -hmm. uh, whether that's basic education, short skills, post-school, university. We just want young people to be supported to finish. Uh, Secondly, we want to talk about transitions, which is the transition between leaving um, the place of study and entering the workplace, and that young people are supported in what is an extremely vulnerable time for for most young South Africans. And then lastly, jobs. We know that the economy is struggling. We know that creating jobs in the formal sector is difficult. But given those realities, we think there are opportunities that exist, such as following work in the informal sector, um, public works programs, opportunities that do exist that could be leveraged better to create a real work experience for young people and link them to further opportunity. So once these collectives have been established now following your, your national road trip, how will these particular agenda points then be addressed going forward? So if you go to our website, we under each agenda point, we have very practical s- solutions that we think under each of these broad agenda points. Mm. Um, and the three, I'm just going to speak about the three that we want to focus on for this year, sure. um, which is a national catch-up strategy, um, which is that all young people that have either fallen behind in school or have dropped out, that we need a national plan to catch these young people up. Uh, The second one we're looking at is to decrease the cost of job seeking. So I know there was um, a lot of hype a few weeks ago where Uber partnered with um, an intern organization to provide some free Uber rides for young job seekers. Transport costs and data costs are a serious um, burden for young people. So let's talk about how we can decrease those costs for young job seekers. Sure. Um, And then lastly, to reduce red tape um, for the opportunities that do exist. So, for example, we know that government's got the employment tax incentive which is supposed to help um, take the burden off employers for employing um, young people. Um, And let's look at how small to medium uh, enterprises who are really the ones creating these jobs, how can they access these government funds more easily and with less red tape? So the private sector also then plays a a, a particular role uh, in the the youth capital. How do you see that 
particular aspect working and unfolding? Well, we know, again, I think it's a, it's an issue of coordination. Mm. A lot of private sector companies, they do want to do something. They have big um, CSI budgets, but everybody's doing their own little project. And I think if we coordinated our efforts a little bit better, if big business said to the smaller business, this is how you get your employment tax incentive. This is how you access CETA funding for extra training. Um, if we could come together, I think that's really where the magic lies. And then also for, for average South Africans who feel that this is this big, overwhelming problem, you know, there are small things you can do if you work with a young person, or you've had a young person, even a casual work in your home, write them a reference letter. If you see a job opportunity in your local shopping mall, share it on a WhatsApp group, post it on social media, because young people aren't necessarily in the places where those jobs are being advertised. Sure. And so these are small things that might seem in, you know, insignificant, but I think that they do all add up. Okay. It's exciting stuff, and I think you've t- touched on some really key aspects which I haven't heard being mentioned before because I've spoken to quite a few uh, organizations and projects also addressing uh, youth unemployment. So there could be something particularly around education because that's so crucial and linking up with the, uh, with the catch-up strategy. I mean, your f- stat that you quoted earlier, Crystal, 8 million people not in education or formal training. That's a huge challenge for the country. Absolutely. And just to point out, that's the latest stat from Q3 of 2019. So I'm pretty sure it's gone up. Um, just the stats haven't been released yet. So where to from here now for, for Youth Capital? You've done the, the Western Cape workshop. You're heading towards East London, you had mentioned. Following the establishment of the collect, uh, collectives, what, what's next? Well, we hope that we can create real space in policy discussions. So we've been fortunate enough to be invited to uh, quite high level policy meetings as well as being panelists on various conferences where some private sector is present, some academics are present, Mm. um, and to really be a conduit for those voices of young people. We might not be able to have the entire network in the room with us, um, but we're constantly with them on WhatsApp and Twitter, and we are in the room. We can really make sure that their voices are heard. And so that's really the strength that we want to bring forward from the collective going forward and to be more influential in those policy spaces. Where can young people find out more and how can they get involved with Youth Capital? So our our website is youthcapital.co.za. On Facebook, if you just look for Youth Capital, you'll find us. Um, On Twitter, Youth Capital SA, as well as on Instagram. Um, And as I mentioned, if you go to the website, on the top there's a WhatsApp line that's usually easiest for young people or a Facebook message. Um, We'll we'll get back to you via those routes. And for any private sector or corporate businesses, you can sign up for a newsletter, which will start running at the end of this month, um, also through our website. Fantastic. Project lead for Youth Capital, Crystal Duncan, thank you for your time for for sharing the initiative, and I wish you success because if you succeed, South Africa is going to succeed. So Absolutely. thank you so much. <laughs> thank, thank you. you.